and I was the first Samoan queen on that TV show RuPaul's Drag Race. And I wore that really with pride, you know. I just knew that going onto that TV show was gonna be an experience and I just had to go, all right, I'm doing this. Whatever happens, I don't embarrass your mum. <laughs> it was the main thing, because I'll get a hiding when I get home. <laughs> Salopalawa, my name is Queen Kong, also known as Thomas Wanua. I am of Samoan and Tongan descent, originally from South Auckland, Mangele. <laughs> 275 period. But I guess I'm a drag queen. I'm from the neck up Beyonce, from the neck down Jay Z. So I started my sort of life as an artist when I was about 16. I did a youth program at Black Race Dance Company called the Urban Youth Movement. And, you know, being from South Auckland, and especially then, there weren't many examples of Pacifica artists or queer people that I could look to. I think the only people I could look at was like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And yes, we're built the same, but <laughs> I don't want to be a wrestler. I do that in my spare time. I'm looking for a pure life. You know, my family was really supportive, well, for the most part. I think my dad always wanted me to be a rugby player, which is why I'm built like a brick shit house. <laughs> you know, at that age, the idea of doing dance was really shameful to my father. So he struggled with it for a while. The thing I loved about Black Race was being able to reinforce what makes me excellent, which is my bus speaker flavor, my values, you know. But I've always just been really aware that the thing that makes me powerful is our ancestry, you know. Lights, camera, action. You know, I was the first Samoan queen on that TV show, RuPaul's Drag Race. And I wore that really with pride, you know. I made sure that I spoke about it all the time, you know, to the point where they were bored of listening to it. But I'm bored of hearing about white queens, so how about that? <laughs> I was nominated for the Logie Award. Here in Australia, obviously, it's like the Emmys or like the Golden Globes. It was amazing to be there and I was so proud to sort of, you know, be the first drag queen to be nominated. But I also knew that I was like a door that I'm opening that I know lots of other people are gonna walk through afterwards. So that's the beginning, a baby step, but a step nonetheless. The beautiful thing about having my family here and being from a Pacific family is no matter how big or how much I achieve, you know, as soon as I walk through that door, ganga mea. <laughs> like, you know, Wash the dishes, like cook me dinner, it's so humbling. I really appreciate the fact that I have people in my life, like my family, that hold me accountable and also keep me on the ground. You know, two flat feet planted firmly, 10 toes down into the soil. Because I also know that I'm like the beneficiary of so many people that have sacrificed in order for me to go out and realize my potential. My mum knew that for me to take the position at Black Grace, it meant that my little sister and her would have to sacrifice. My sister's younger than me. She dropped out of school at 14 and so that she can go and work with mum to support my career of being a dancer. You know, and so recently I was able to move my mum and my sister and my sister's kids from New Zealand over to Melbourne. And for me to give back to my sister and my mum the way that they sacrificed it, it means I can take care of us you know, if it wasn't for the women in my life. You know, those women taught me how to be a man in the most respectful way as possible. You see these nobodies try and kill the queen, you got best of three, then it's time for me. That's why, like, drag is important to me. I'm definitely a man, but, you know, this is like my superhero version of, like, my mum, my auntie, my nana. You know, all my sisters, my cousins that are female, that this is the version that I like to live in because it's how I feel powerful because of them. This is why you don't mess with me. See, I'm technically best there ever be. Out of anyone that I embody in drag, it's definitely my nana Alofa because as much as she was unconditional love, she was like tough love, you know, it was like she was that solid auntie that would, you know, cuss someone out if they're walking past and looking at you sideways. The main thing she would say to me when I was growing up was two eyes, two ears, one mouth. You know, lots of people just speak you know, without even watching or listening and actively listening. And so I think most of my success has really come from that. Whenever I go home, I draw massive inspiration from where I'm from, from South Auckland. It is where all the magic happened as much as it might have felt like trauma back in the days. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it was really hard at some points, but especially being like gay and just like not being able to talk about it. But I do like draw most of my inspiration from, you know, where we come from, how the beauty of the Pacific, the beauty of Pacific Island women, like our base value is reciprocity, sharing, we share food, we share love you know, tell not, all of these things that we share, knowing that our space is starting to sort of widen and we're getting more time and eyes on us, I just have a big sort of responsibility to make sure I do right and do what I can to add to the conversation, yeah.